Today we're talking all about focusing on solutions, not just any solutions, but the kind that changes the game in how we help our children learn and grow. Hey there, loving parents. Welcome to our channel where we dive into the magic of turning tricky situations into opportunities for growth, all with a sprinkle of fun and lots of heart. Why does this approach work like magic? Well, you're about to find out. But first we ask one favor from you, please like subscribe and share this video to spread the word. Now grab a comfy seat and let's embark on this exciting journey together, making every day with our children a memorable one. All right, let's dive into something super cool and a bit magical, but in a way that's all about helping out when things get a bit tricky. Ever feel like you're just spinning your wheels trying the same old things to get your children to listen or behave better, and it just doesn't work? Well, there's this awesome idea that's like a secret weapon, but instead of keeping it secret, we're going to share it with everyone. It's called Focusing on Solutions, and it's a total game changer in how we help our children learn and grow. Old school versus new cool. So back in the day, and sometimes now too, when children made mistakes or didn't follow rules, the grown-ups would often jump straight to punishment. Think like, no video games for a week, or you're grounded. That's the old school way, and it often leaves everyone feeling pretty bummed out and not really solving anything. But here comes the new cool way, like a superhero of ideas, positive discipline. It's all about chatting with your child, figuring things out together, and treating everyone with respect. It's like turning your little one into little problem solvers and detectives, helping them understand the why behind things instead of just laying down the law because I said so. Let's make the shift. Imagine you're in a few different scenarios where things aren't going exactly right. One, the late homework dilemma, old way. No going out with friends for a week because homework was late. Solution focused, sitting down together to talk about why deadlines matter and coming up with a plan, like setting up a homework schedule that works. Two, sibling rivalry showdown. Old way, putting everyone in timeout after a toy snatching incident. Solution focused, helping your child talk about what's bugging them and making a playtime plan that everyone agrees on. Three, classroom chaos. Old way, detention for being super disruptive. Solution focused, chatting about ways to help keep the energy in check, like maybe helping out in class as a special assistant. Four, the messy room mystery. Old way, no TV until the room is spotless. Solution focused, working out a cleanup schedule together, maybe making it into a fun game with rewards. Why this magic works? This isn't just putting a fancy sticker over the problem, it's digging deep and planting seeds for skills that last a lifetime. Like problem solving, jumping into problems with both feet and finding smart ways to sort them out. It also teaches accountability, owning up to what went wrong and figuring out how to fix it. Give your children resilience, learning that messing up isn't the end of the world, but a step toward getting better at life. We've got this cool mantra, the three R's and an H, related, respectful, reasonable, and helpful. It's like the secret sauce that makes sure the solutions make sense, are fair, and something our children can actually do. By the way, if you are looking for an amazing nursery to send your little ones to, check out our website at purplebeesdaynursery.com. Okay, let's bring it to life. Let's take this out of imagination land and see how it works for real. Like in a classroom, if some kids are always running late instead of getting mad, everyone could brainstorm sweet ideas to help out, like a louder bell or a buddy system. It's not about dodging trouble, it's about everyone pitching in to lift each other up. Empowerment in action. When your children get to be part of figuring things out, they feel super important and listened to. This means less headbutting and more high fives all around. It's about learning from oopsies and growing stronger, smarter and kinder. Start small, dream big. If this all sounds new and a bit scary, just pick one little thing to try. Remember, it's not about being perfect as perfection doesn't exist. It's about getting better bit by bit. By focusing on solutions, we're not just fixing today's oopsies, we're raising awesome humans who'll face the world ready to tackle anything with a big heart and a clever mind. The three R's and an H solution-focused superpowers for the little ones. Now let's break down the three R's and an H, especially for the tiny humans in our lives, like those adorable munchkins under five years old. This approach is all about cuddles and learning, not timeouts and frowns. One, related, keep it connected. The consequence or solution must be a direct connection to the behavior or issue at hand. This results in it being more understandable and meaningful to your child. Like for example, if your toddler spills water while trying to pour it into a cup, 
A related solution would be involving the child in cleaning up the spill. This teaches them the natural outcome of their actions in a tangible way, linking the concept of cause and effect directly to their experience. Let's look at two more examples to really understand it. If your child throws food during mealtime, instead of simply saying, don't do that, involve them in the cleanup process. This directly relates the consequence, cleaning, to the action, throwing food, teaching them about the outcomes of their choices in a tangible way. Another example could be when your toddler forgets to put their coat on before going outside and feels cold. Rather than immediately fixing the situation for them, use it as an opportunity to discuss the importance of dressing appropriately for the weather. This helps them make the connection between their actions, not wearing a coat, and the natural consequence, feeling cold. Two, respectful, always with kindness. The solution should always uphold the child's dignity, treating them with kindness and understanding rather than shaming or belittling them for their mistakes. For example, when your child hits another child out of frustration, instead of scolding them harshly, you could kneel to their level and say, I see you're upset. Hitting hurts others. Let's find another way to show we're angry. This respects your child's feelings while guiding them towards more appropriate expressions of emotion. Let's look at two more examples for this. If your child becomes overwhelmed and starts screaming in a public place, instead of expressing frustration or embarrassment, take them aside and offer a calm, comforting presence. Say something like, I see you're feeling really upset right now. Let's take a moment to breathe together. This approach respects their feelings and models, a constructive way to deal with overwhelming emotions. Another one might be when your child is struggling to share toys with a friend. Rather than insisting they share immediately, acknowledge their feelings first. You might say, I know it's hard to share your favorite toy, but how do you think your friend feels waiting for a turn? This method respects their emotions while gently guiding them towards empathy and sharing. Three, reasonable, keep it doable. The solution or consequence should be proportionate to the situation and within your child's capability to understand and execute. It should not be so harsh that it becomes punitive or so lenient that it loses its educational value. For example, if your child refuses to put away toys after playtime, insisting they do an overwhelming cleanup might be too much. Instead, offer a reasonable solution. Can you put away the blocks today? Tomorrow we can try putting away the dolls. This breaks down the task into manageable steps that your child can achieve. Let's look at two more examples. Let's say your child has drawn on the walls. Instead of imposing an unrelated punishment, provide washable markers in the future and designate a special area where it's okay to draw. This solution is reasonable because it addresses the behavior by setting clear, age-appropriate boundaries for creative expression. Another example could be if your young child is resistant to bedtime instead of demanding they go to bed immediately, Introduce a calming bedtime routine that they can look forward to. This could include reading a story together or having a few minutes of quiet time with a favorite toy. This approach is reasonable as it makes bedtime seem less like a punishment and more like a pleasant end to the day. Four, helpful, aim to teach. The focus is on helping your child in learning from the situation and developing skills to handle similar issues in the future. Solutions should provide a learning opportunity rather than just addressing the immediate problem. For example, when your child interrupts during story time, a helpful approach could be practicing turn-taking during a game or conversation. Explain, we all get a chance to speak. Let's practice listening when it's someone else's turn. This not only addresses the specific issue, but also teaches valuable social skills. Let's visit two more scenarios. Your child consistently forgets to wash their hands before eating. Create a fun song about hand washing to sing together. This not only addresses the immediate need for cleanliness, but also instills a lifelong habit in an enjoyable way. Another example is if your toddler who is having difficulty waiting their turn, practice patience through simple games that require taking turns, like rolling a ball back and forth. Explain that just like in the game, everyone gets a turn and waiting can be part of the fun. This method is helpful because it teaches patients in a context they can understand and enjoy. Implementing the three R's and an H in the early years. This whole idea needs us to think differently. Instead of just saying no all the time, it's about being role models involving children in figuring things out and celebrating the big and small wins together. 
It's about making every day a little lesson and becoming the best we can be. By weaving the three R's and an H into our days with the littlest ones, we're building a world that's not just about getting through the day, but about filling every day with learning, respect, and lots of love. It's about setting the stage for a lifetime of curiosity, kindness, and the courage to face challenges head on. Let's make this journey together, one solution-focused step at a time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you find our content helpful and informative. Your support helps us create more videos that make parenting and teaching a joy. For more information, visit us at purplebeeshildcare.com. Thanks for tuning in, and make sure you enjoy every moment with your children.